Hey, we on? Mm-hmm. Awesome. All right, Facebook Live. Uh, as you know, every uh, Wednesday morning at about six o'clock, six thirty, we do our Facebook Live where we uh, where we talk pianos. So last week, last Wednesday, where we left off, everybody remember? Jake, remember where we left off last week? Voicing. Yeah. We're so. Um, so here's what we're going to do today. We're going to we're going to go through the whole process. At least that's the hope. Um, we'll see if we have time to do it. Um, we're going to have several stations going, uh, getting um, hammers ready. Let's go look at the let's go look at the piano. Um, we've got about I don't know, ten steps or so that we're going to go through. you're a piano technician, feel free to, um, to chime in either with a question or a comment or um, an observation or a suggestion. We're always open to any of that. Or if you're not a piano technician, then please um, let us know if you have any questions or uh, anything. Just, just type it in and Stacy will read them out. Okay, so here's where we left off last week. We've, we've uh, filed and needled the bass hammers, right? We have a number of samples from the old, uh, from, from this piano, the old hammers. So here's, here's what we're going to do. We are going to start with, uh, with numbering the hammers just so that we you know, because we're going to be cutting everything off, and they're actually already numbered. But where they're numbered <coughs> is, uh, is we're going to like be coding. We're going to be drilling that out, basically. So we'll number them. We will um, determine our measurements, so our angles and uh, our the length of the hammer, because we're going to be cutting that. We'll be we'll be determining the uh, the cove tailing. We can probably do later. Uh, we're, we're going to be oh the, the the rake all of those kinds of measurements that will that will determine then we'll we'll do the filing on the rest of the set which is right here which um, we've already done on this remember that's to remove the the cup remember from last week when hammers are manufactured they're just manufactured in one long uh, giant hammer and then they're cut into all of these uh, individual hammers, right? And when that's done, some tension is released, and so the hammers just they kind of start to cup up at the at the uh, um, at the edges. So if you were to look at the hammer like this, of course this is an old hammer. When they're cut on either side, there's kind of a kind of a U shape. And so, so what we do is we go and file file that off so that it's nice and flat, so that when it strikes the hammer, hopefully it's striking all three strings simultaneously rather than rather than like the outside two before it strikes the inner middle string. Okay, then uh, pre-voicing, which is the needling, the deep needling in the shoulders from about from about nine o'clock and three o'clock up to about eleven and one, something like that. Then uh, we're going to cut them to length, so that's that's from there to there. I'm gonna pull them out. They have, uh, which I think on this set we might not have to cut them. Yeah. Then, uh, then we're going to bore the hammers, which uh, which they're going to be bored at different angles uh, for the bass as opposed to the treble, um, and also we're going to set the rake probably probably at like 89 degrees, something like that. Then then we'll do the cove, which uh, this jig right there, so the hammer goes in. 
just like that. And then on the drill press, this is so this is clamped down on the drill press so it doesn't move. And we just go through all all hammers, put it into the into the jig, and then drill it down, and it creates creates this cove in there. Right? See that? Then um, arcing arcing is done. On this jig, and the hammer goes on like that, and the screw goes up into the cove. And this uh, this little scrap piece of wood is clamped onto the um, sander, the disc sander, in a in a certain place, and then this little keyhole thing just fits on the screw and then and then just gives it a gives it that arc at the end of the tail okay. and the final no second to last step <coughs> we get to use this on the bandsaw which that goes in there and we'll we'll run through um, to taper all of the hammers. So this this just slides on the bandsaw and it does two hammers at once. One there, one there, and these little set screws um, determine various things from uh, how extreme the taper is, um, where the taper begins, that sort of thing, all in conjunction with setting the, um, setting the table saw. And then the very last thing that we'll do uh, is checkering. Chickering? Chickering. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Which, you know what that is? What checkering is? No. Scott? Putting some texture on the tail? Yeah, that's right. We'll just go through with files and, and yeah, put some. Kind of, yeah, yeah. Texture is probably. I mean, filing makes it makes it sound a little bit too aggressive. We don't want to go too aggressive. I mean, that's that's good for the short term, because when it's when it's really um, an aggressive uh, checkering job, that gives you nice friction with the back check. But the problem is that tears up the the leather on the back check in a hurry. So so we kind of want to balance. Just enough. Yeah, just enough. That's cool. right. Okay, so you see why I'm kind of uh, unsure that we'll be able to get through all of that in, uh, in an hour and 15 minutes. I think it's, it's very unlikely, but I think if we, maybe if we have uh, stations, we can, we can do it. Maybe. Who knows? Si se puede. Si se puede. So, um... So why don't we start with, uh, let's see, anyone anyone want to volunteer for different stations? You want to volunteer for a station? Okay, great. Um, let's see, we will get you set up. You can you can do some work on the drill press. So we have two drill presses, which, um, which we'll need for both the coving and the boring. Um, okay, why don't we just why don't we just start getting this? Don, will you number these? Mm -hmm. um, let's number them. Um, let's number them right here. On the uh, so this is the underside because the staple is uh, is to the bottom of the staple right here. What's that? Where, where the staple folds. Yeah, where the staple fold is. Yeah. So um, it's like this one. This one can be number one. Just number them all the way through. So <coughs> that's just that's <coughs> yeah. So are we? That's okay.
is this a great thing in this section? So the length. like on, on cool. either set. So that's that's done. Um, boring. Let's do um, let's do the boring. Scott, would you head up the boring? Sure. Okay. Then um, there's a there's an angle. Can you pen or something? Just got a little you know, a sharp the a sharp or a sharpie. Pencil. Okay. I've got one of these that if it, if it holds out. <laughs> okay. But I need one more for that section. All right. Uh, Jacob? Yes, sir. Do you want to do the um, coving? No, I've, I've never done that. Oh, well. Great opportunity to learn. Sure. So, Jake, um, you can get your. Uh, Hammer, we don't necessarily have to duplicate the, the coving pattern. <coughs> um, yeah. Uh, it, really matter at all? it doesn't really matter. Uh, I would, so that, uh, that radius um, plus, that's kind of a, looks like they had a, a, a totally different jig. The way that, uh, the way that it's not a complete, it's not a circle. And that's what that's what our jig is set up for is to is to get a part of a circle, sure, right? Um, and they had they had something else. I'm not sure what their jig was. Um, just uh, so long as it's um, you know not not interfering, not getting too close to the um, shank. Mm -hmm. And so here's. There's one for you to kind of we have more um, or less compare. Amy Bastian watching and Malin oh, cool. Walker Thomas. Nice. Hi, Amy and Malin. Hi. Hi, Amy. <laughs> so, um, to make a complete base section, I need one more, one more hammer. And this is going to be. We don't have to keep it in a section. I can just put it up there. I think what we'll do. So there are 30 up here? There are 25. Oh, 25. And there's 26 in this section. Okay. Then um, Scott, do you want to do you want to talk us through um, the bore distance, the angles, and, and how you're going to determine that? Why don't Why don't we go over to the um, Don? While you do that, let's go over to the um, drill press so that Scott can talk us through the process that we're going to go through to. Uh, I think I have internet connection in there though, oh, so I might have that. to. Yeah, I, I might have to. Um, we'll see. We'll see if we can see how far we can go. I might have to stay back here though. Mm -hmm. it's gonna, there's the drill press. We've still got internet. That's good.
can I go in? I think you can come in. I Did we yesterday. fix it? I know, I'm like, I still Scott, still have internet. Uh, or, or Jacob. Uh, <gasps> it is. Oh, there he is. It's working, Putnam. <laughs> it is working. <laughs> it's, we have internet <laughs> back oh, here. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, I was like, can I go back here? <laughs> it's like going really One slow. More step. <laughs> this is Scott. Scott, you want some claps? Yeah. And just talk us through it, because so I've never seen this before. Our hammer boring jig has a lot of different things you can adjust for the angle. So we're trying to, this is the, the old hammer. This is just a shank I'm using to line it up. So we're wanting to get this straight up and down, and then you can also tilt it this direction. And then you can tilt it this way as well to get the, the correct angle so the hammer's matching the strings. I'm not sure if that'll be long enough. So I'm going to be clear back here and then further. Up. I think most people have been using it without clamps. Just kind of setting the fence in place. Ideal. Not really. If you had another block, I know that would work. That would probably work. Oh, yeah. so Some little tiny bits. They're, they're like they're, they're about the size of a hammer shank, but they're only about that long. So um, update everyone on on China while we're kind of scurrying around the shop. Um, as of yesterday, I got word that uh, that they got the invitation. So, so of course, China you can't just visit China, but you have to have an invitation. Um, and and so that's that's I guess where the hang-up was um, that uh, they were waiting for those invitation letters. And it was the Chinese New Year, and oh. so everyone at the factory was was completely unresponsive. They were totally off. Um, and not answering emails or anything. And so apparently yesterday they had the invitation letters. And uh, anyway, um, now we just have to work on getting the visa with those invitation letters. Hello, Curtis. Welcome back. Nice, Curtis. Mm -hmm. Curtis, we need you back. If we do a second one. Curtis, <laughs> while we're uh, while we're working, tell us how your how your uh, PhD is going. On. Yeah, he says hey to everyone. And yeah, tell us how your PhD is going, Curtis. Curtis. <laughs> Curtis is, is uh, for those of you who haven't met Curtis, um, Curtis uh, worked here for a while, um, and uh, and was just an awesome shop um, brain. He really just kind of gets pianos and gets 
everything that goes into them. Um, I left to get a PhD in uh, trombone performance, I believe. Yeah, he just did a recital recently, and he'll get us recordings cool. as soon as he can. <laughs> Were you looking for the exact size of a shank? Patrick says here. I didn't know what you were going for. Yeah, that'll be good. Um, so, Scott, what do you like? Do you like um, 220? Do you like 218? Do you like... What size are shanks again? Shanks are 218. Um, for grands, I like 218. Okay. Um, for uprights, it's easier to have it a bit looser, but for grands, especially because we're giving them all this hammer craft, it helps to have, have it right about the same size. Yeah. Okay. Sounds good. Curtis checked out Jacob Collier. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Said he's think? pretty awesome. Yeah, he's pretty awesome. He's a virtuoso. And also, Curtis might be uh, um, interested in Jacob Collier. Also, as a um, because he loves teaching. He loves not not only is he an incredible musician, but then performer, arranger. But he's also um, he also loves to lecture and he loves to teach his craft. And so, Curtis might be interested in that aspect as well. He talks a lot about negative harmony. Curtis, do you know about negative harmony? So let's, uh, we'll get a, uh, an assembly line going here so that, and everybody can kind of have a chance to, um, to do each, each step. Um, Let's see, David, would you get the other jigs for us? And then um, Jonathan, yeah, they're, they're just over on the piano. Jonathan, would you get the other, other hammers? Um, Brigham, would you get a table from upstairs? We don't need one of the, one of the big, long tables, but just maybe like a, um, a table about this big, that we can just, something clean that we can put um, all of our work on. He hasn't heard of negative harmony, and he asked what it is. Okay. While we're waiting, let's go talk negative harmony. Actually, I don't, I don't totally understand it all that well, but trying to teach it, I've only watched two videos on it, so maybe trying to teach it to you, Curtis, would help solidify. So let's take a, while, while everybody's getting set up, let's take a three minute negative harmony idea. So if you have your, your, your major scale, you have um, an axis around which the, um, all of the notes rotate. And so every note kind of has its opposite. And so, so you take, um, okay, so, so you take your C chord. I remember the C chord, the way it rotates, it becomes an A flat chord because all of the notes in the C chord, when they're rotated around the axis, I think, see, where is the axis? 
is the axis in between those two. So you're maybe the axis was there. Anyway, there's some axis in there, Curtis, where if you rotate it, so if you take your C and you rotate it around the axis. Get. Oh, somebody help me. Curtis, why don't you look it up? Because I'm not remembering it. Anyway, the idea is an alternate form of harmony. And I need to watch those videos again. But I do remember it was it was really interesting. Just a just a regular, like a like a three six two five, um, became it's like a, a three three six two five became like a um, that was a substitution chord based on the negative rotating in the axis. All of the notes in the in the three chord rotated around the axis. I think became your A flat, and rather than going up, rather than uh, going up in the bass line, up a fourth, down a, f and then so, so you're basically going up by uh, by fourths um, in your bass line. So fourth, there's your fourth. It was more, I think it was fifths. So it went like A flat, E flat, and then, a, and then a fifth to B flat, F, and then back to your one chord. Um, anyway, I need to study it some more. Nicely okay. out of tune piano. Yeah, It's right, it's directly above us right here. Yeah, that's where I found that one. That's where you find that one? Okay. I think I'll have a table. He did exactly He did. Good boy. Submissive. Meek. Meek, mild. Humble. Like a child. Like that? Easily. Scott, do you have anything to, uh, to talk us through? Stacy has one. He's got one too. Mine was pink. Alright. So, to determine where the hole's gonna go in the new hammer. You can use the old one as a reference, and these actually line up really, really well, which is kind of unusual. The old ones are usually a different size, like really fatter or longer or something. But these ones are almost perfect. So you can just look at where the old hole is and make a little mark where that's gonna go. You're matching the cores, right? Is that what you match, or the end of the felt? So it, it kind of depends. These, this one actually works for both. So the cores match up about exactly where the edge of the hammer is. If, for example, this felt is shorter than the new felts, do you match up the cores then? Yeah, usually. Because okay. a lot of times the old ones have been filed a few yeah. times, and so they're missing some felt. <clears throat> so this one, we just got lucky where they're both the same. So then this a line there and then we can line that up on the jig. There's this line here, just where we're going to line it up. It goes right there and then this little stop here goes against that. 
So every hammer we put in after this, we just put up against that, and it'll be in exactly yes. the right place. So are they all the same height? Yes, they are. Okay. So that's set. So now we need to set this angle here. So again, using the old hammer as a reference. It's right about there, and that looks like about eight degrees is our angle. And so that'll be the same for all the base hammers, and then it'll change for the other sections. Not a lot of room to work with on the hammer, so you want to make sure you get it pretty perfectly centered. That looks like it's about right. Do you ever use this light right here? The laser? Sometimes. And your bore distance is going to be different on your base hammers and your treble hammers, right? Right. So on the hands, the base hammers are longer. Uprights, they're shorter. Okay, let's get the clamps in place right there. So I want to give me a hand. And you have the angle tilted on the base to the base side. Yes. This is not putting it. Try putting it further in. Curtis, any uh, any luck on negative harmony? You said the internet stink. Right? Gotcha. Yeah, that's right. That's thanks to Jacob Putnam. Jacob! Yes, I invented the internet. <laughs> Give the back shot. Give the back shot. <laughs> Base hammers are longer on grands and shorter on uprights. Ooh. So it's I'm talking about overstrain. Uh, so like on this upright. So the hammers are hitting the strings from the top side. On a grand piano, you take this. They're like essentially it. hitting from the other side. Yeah, they're from the other side. So the base hammers have to be longer to compensate for yeah, yeah. exactly uh -huh. yeah okay all right then let's uh let's start the start the assembly line um let's get these off um and then let's go let's let's start um filing filing these hammers. Oh, 
And then as soon as as soon as Jacob is done or, or uh, Scott is done, he'll pass him to Jacob and he'll do the COVID. And then um, let's get the next juke set up. It's just the RP. Do we have the RP, Jake? Uh, yeah, it's here somewhere. I'm gonna need someone to take the phone. Are you okay holding the phone? I'm gonna be the master the of the. I'm gonna master this phone. What's up, Curtis? So here we have some hammers. You can see they're slightly kind of curved in the middle, just ever so slightly. It's kind of. And that happens because when this is like in the factory, this is all just one big piece of wood and one big piece of felt. And then they go through and cut it. <clears throat> and then that makes the felt on the top kind of spread out a tiny bit just naturally. So, uh, yeah, I think we're gonna sand this down a tiny bit to make them all flat. Scott. He's boring these hammers super well. Oh, very boring. <laughs> it's a boring, boring job. Ooh, is that right? Oh, you're good. So 
so precise. Here we've got Brigham. He's setting up the uh, coving jig to cove the tails of the hammers. So precise, pristine, mess careful. Oh, if we mess this up, we're done for. Yeah. Okay. Don, are we gonna sand these? Okay. See it. From the sandy, you can see there's some felt so getting loose on here. Right now. It's pretty here fine it's sandpaper. We're just, um, we're just kind of get rid of the grooves that are in it. Oh, we're not really like reshaping them hardcore, but. Ooh, the cover in action. Here we are. Oh, he just did it. The tail is coved. Nice. How do you feel, Brigham, about this first cove? Okay. All right. Let's check out how the boring is going. Still boring? I think it's pretty exciting. I never called it boring. Didn't know what they were talking about. So you're at a like an eight degree angle here? Yeah. And that varies a little bit between pianos. But yeah. That's what it is for this one. Ooh, nice. Still sanding. Looks like we've put a pause on coving for now. What's up, Brigham? How do you feel this morning? Sick! Oh, careful. Don't get me sick.
How's this looking, Don? Those are looking a lot better. Mm -hmm. They're way more uh, shaped how they're supposed to be. No more grooves. Flatter? Yep, they're very much flatter. Some uh, final touches on the sanding. So, Don, you're gonna stick him with the needle. Okay, go for it. Okay, let's see it. Jacob Call is watching. What's up, Jacob? Nice. This kind of loosens slash softens the felt a bit. So you go from about 9 and 3 o'clock to about 11 and 1 o'clock-ish on each side. Yeah. Right now we're working on this side. On the left hand side. So loosening the felt on here, uh, poking it with the needle, will m make the tone of the piano more... Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Less tinny? More resonant. What's up? All done, Scott? Would you say you were uh, successful? Yeah. Got them all bored. Nothing caught on fire. Nothing caught on fire. <laughs> So Don, why are you Recently? doing that? Uh-oh. We're, we're... One of our needles is falling. falling. It's just a little small screwdriver, right? Yeah. So, uh, he's needling these hammers to voice them. It'll change the tone of the, the hammers, the like sound the hammers make when they hit the strings. Kind of make it... The, the harder... A uh, the harder a hammer is, the more kind of harder the tone will be. Okay. Like, oh, okay. More like maybe it like if it's like super hard, it'll be super kind of tinny sounding. Yeah, makes sense. The softer it is, the more uh, less the bright, warmer. the warmer. Yeah. Yes, that's a good word. Yeah. The warmer the tone will be. Makes sense. So. Okay, so then, so then the pinning kind of loosens up. The... Yes, yeah, so the needling. Yeah, just kind of loosens loosens up the felt a bit. Okay. Yeah, it's called, called voicing. It won't be quite, quite as an extreme. Probably just use this as our sample. So, um, so go ahead and go start heavy board. All the, all the base hammers. All the base hammers have been bored okay, to death. Um, go ahead and start coving. So you're saying we'll just adjust the arcing jig. To take off a little less? Yeah, I already, I already adjusted it. Okay. I think it's ready to go. Okay. So, um... Here's the cove. Here we go. Nice. Let's see it. Good work. That's good. Now, let's see the next step, Matt. Yep. So now we're going to taper the ends of it. Now this goes. No, not taper. Uh, never mind, not taper. Marking. 
Arc, that, arcing. Yeah, yeah. It goes to that. That's he hold there. Do we go farther than that? Is that good? No, I feel good. I feel pretty good about that. Okay. So, so that wasn't as extreme as this one. No, that one is just gonna is just a test. Okay. Nice. Oh, beautiful. Nice work, Jacob. That's good. Don is still needling these hammers. So how far are you spacing those, Don? Those pokes. Just loosening them up, I go up about a sixteenth or a little bigger each time. A little bit more than sixteenth of an inch. inch. Between a sixteenth and an eighth of an inch. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Okay, now we're going to actually be tapering the base hammers. So how, to, how come we have to do it for the grand hammers? We have to taper them on a saw, and we can't do it on the sander. So the, the table saw ends up giving it a better edge. Okay. And it's more precise. And can replicate it easier. Okay. So the, the sander tends to do a pretty precise job, but it ends up creating a lot of burns and ends up Good. Like yeah it gets like it. junk in the in the felt yeah. doesn't it? So with the so do table you, saw it just cuts it really clean Do you do the uprights with this as well? Frustrating. Curtis Biggs, are these modifications just to make sure the tail of the hammer is 
out of the way, give space for the action to work. Curtis, you are correct. So yeah, um, the tapering itself is. Because sure the uh, they'll rub against each other if the bass hammers aren't tapered because of the angle that they're at. Back checks. Yes. Yeah. When you play the hammer, it uh -huh. catches it. We're on an upright. It's it's different, so it doesn't need. Yeah, that. it doesn't need that. But the back check, yeah, that's just, so that it lands nicely on the back check, Correct. right? It doesn't get stuck. So the tapering basically is just making sure that they clear each other. Just to keep them out of the way. Of each other. So I think I think what it's supposed to do. Does is, that answer so your question, right Curtis Biggs? So it's supposed to, you know, do that, and then when they go to the sander, I think they're supposed to kind of follow the curve in a sense. You know what I mean with the with the sander? I think they're supposed to. As you can see, there's lots of uh, prep work and setup that needs to be done before the work actually takes place. Uh, Don is now needling the other side of these hammers. Boring is all done. We're still coving. All right, let's see one. Okay. Uh, Curtis, yes, you do not need to adjust. Oh, on the base hammers, you actually do need to still taper them because they are still angled. Um, so if they're not tapered, they'll probably rub up against each other, uh, just as it, as it is with the uh, grand hammers. However, they don't need to be coved or arced like this because like on this upright when the hammers the hammers will be coming out of here they'll just be falling back and forth like that and there's nothing really I mean there's the rest rail but the hammer itself doesn't actually touch the rest rail it's the shanks that touch the rest rail um, but on a grand when the tails fall down they fall onto a back check so the tails actually touch stuff set up like that but then that doesn't leave much room for that other screw still working on it <laughs> how's the uh, arcing going it's good is it going yeah it's fun working uh, uh this one done yeah it's a little wonky because of Briggins, that's how it's supposed to be. Oh, okay. <laughs> I like that. That doesn't seem right to me. Let <laughs> me just right. Alright. And then you just put it on here. He said to go fast so it doesn't burn the wood. Yeah, Uh, yes, Curtis, we only taper the base hammers. Sorry, we only taper the... I'm trying to figure out what emphasis to put on my words. Um, yes, all base hammers should be tapered to avoid rubbing on an upright and a grand. How's this coming, Don?
You're almost done, huh? Then you've got this set to do, right? So when you're done with these, they'll be bored, right? Yeah. Okay. So why don't they come already pre uh coved? You can do that. You oh you can. Them. Oh yeah. Um, cool. We can do it here. Yes mm -hmm. you can. Yes we can. We can do anything and here. That's right. And it is fun. <laughs> Getting it figured out? Maybe. Or at least a workable version. Perhaps. Okay. <laughs> Alright. So for those of you who just joined us, um, we are preparing a set of grand piano hammers to be installed into a piano. So the first station here we've got um, sanding of the hammer felt to make sure that they're all even and shaped correctly and then we take it to this station right here where we bore them meaning we make the holes for the hammer shanks to go into the tails and then after that they come over to this station which is where the hammers are coved hey can you show me a coved hammer so that is done to them to uh, remove mass and make them kind of lighter and it's also tradition apparently thanks and then after that they are arced so we arc them right here yeah this is my first time doing yeah this. okay don't mess up I'm gonna try not to I don't know if I got that right yeah maybe take off a little more Um, looks pretty good. I would I would ask Brigham the the master. So um, that is so. So we arc them so that they fall on the back checks um, the way that they're supposed to. And then after that, we take them to the the taper. So we taper the sides of the tails on the bass hammers only so that they don't rub against each other when you're playing the piano. So. Yeah. If only we had three hands, that would be cool. Can I needle these ones? No? Yeah, we gotta, we gotta uh, put the sandpaper. Yeah, yeah. Can I sand them and yeah. needle them? Yeah. <coughs> Go for that.
Okay. We'll start start with the this one. Yeah, start with the highest number. Start with this sandpaper here, then yeah. this one. Start with the highest one. Or start with the lowest yeah, one, you this mean? Is the, this is the work, the grittiest and finer. Than yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, one, two, three. You want to take over the camera? Sweet. So this kind of sandpaper um, is measured in a different way so that the 100 grit is probably what we would normally think of as 80 grit and then the 60 grit is probably uh, 120 and then the 40 grit is probably a 320 something like that I don't know I'm guessing just do a full stroke just yeah just yeah there you go think do a little worried about them being on a little bit of an angle, you know what I mean? I mean they might not be going straight up, but let's do this. Um, let's loosen these up. Loosen up all these screws. See if you can get them as straight as possible. And you hold them straight, and I will try and screw them down again. Does that look pretty perpendicular? You want them to be bottomed out really well. Looks good. That looks better to me. Is this one, is this one coming in a little bit? It's just slightly, slightly in. This one's going slightly, that's straight up. This one looks like it's going slightly in. Is that good? This is where you run out of hands. <laughs> this little setting it section. I think it looks better than it did. Okay. Okay, do it. Get, just, set, just grab the very tail end of it and, and there and just pull the whole thing through. There you go. Full stroke. And if you just kind of pretend like you're doing each one, but it, it's bleeding over into the both neighbors. I remember when we got this jig, it's like, oh man, we have died and gone to heaven. This is making things so much easier. <laughs> Make sure you hold it really tight with your thumb. 
You know what? We're boring them right where I numbered them. <laughs> I renumbered them. Oh, did you renumber them? Good job. <laughs> yeah, way to go. I figured somewhere in that thing there's going to be a, a whole board. Jig. To a coming, to a going, to a sitting, to a mowing. 
It's a punchline to a joke, but if you haven't heard a joke, it's not funny. <laughs> so what's the joke, Don? You don't want to hear it. <laughs> it's not that good a joke. <laughs> I like dad jokes. Do you? Say dad or dad? Dad. I think all dads the like same dad. That's the same thing. <laughs> 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 Come on, it's funny. <laughs> <laughs> if you raise that up, isn't it pushing the felt into the blade? <laughs> oh, <laughs> so what holds up the back? See, I can't see it from here. I guess I should get the camera over where. Okay, so there's two screws. Mm -hmm. So that clamps it together like that. Oh, I see, and it pushes this plastic down. Onto yeah. The wood. That's a nice. Can you see how many people are watching on the live? Usually. Yeah. How do you right now? There is no one watching. Oh, wait. Yep. We lost them all. Even Curtis. Them on camera. Is that just Facebook Live? Yeah. Oh, okay. Do they make a copy of this? Do they? Yeah, yeah. They, they hold usually, it. They usually save it and and post it. As a normal video, yeah. okay. Live. On YouTube, yeah, you can. Yeah, you can also do it on YouTube as well. Yeah. YouTube does the same thing as Facebook with their live videos. So I think I need to cut a second one to reference where this one needs to be. Someone else want to try? It? I haven't done this yet. We're we're fascinated. Go for it. You could teach me a little bit more sure. thorough than. So, yeah. I like to stay on this side, just in general with the blade saw, it's good not to stand in line with the blade, Okay. just in case something catches and it throws it back, you don't want to be here, so stand at the side, and then you're pushing this up against the fence, against and, pushing it and, so and like, down. you're kind of pushing almost okay. like that direction, so, so it's always against the fence, sure. and then okay. just straight so back. Do you already have it set where it's supposed to be? Yes, so this is just the same as the first one we did. Okay. So run it straight through, pick it up on this side. And then switch it right there. Yeah, and then just hit the big red button right. when you're done. <coughs> so, because run tight. Oh, this? Yeah. And then that's the same when you turn it off. Oh, yeah. Okay. We went pretty fast. You, you can take it a little slower. Oh, I can? Yeah. Okay. So then we can use that. So make it this a little bit higher. Let's do the same side. Go ahead and do the 40. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So So this this one's already been cut, so I'm setting this one slightly higher. So you can and cut the end out the same. Okay. It's cut. Okay.
Yeah, so it's, it's at a bit of an angle. Like that. So kind of table number three. Yeah, so this yeah. screw is lower than this <laughs> screw. So this is raising up the tail. So we'll cut off kind of an, an angle there. Okay. So you just uh, you just push it till the felt hits the shoulder? Um, yeah, sort of. I'm not sure if I'm using this right. You can also use the screw to start. Oh, okay. This thing didn't come with instructions. I know, don't you love that? <laughs> well, we'll do it however we think until we find a better way, huh? <laughs> Now you got one that's cut on two sides and one that's cut on one side and you keep rotating, huh? Now we can see what it looks like. Let's get a real close up of that. I think that'll work. So it's slightly tapered on the on the tail. And that bore is way up to the side. <laughs> that's because it's at an angle. Oh, it's at an angle? So in the middle of the hammer. Should be centered. Okay. It's not an exact science. All right, Tomo. Here we have Steady Hands Brigham. I had uh, done some hammer boring more recently, I would have realized that's probably about where that bit's going to go. What's that? If I had done some hammer boring recently, I probably would have remembered about where that bit goes, where the bore hole goes, and not numbered them there. <laughs>
wandering. Yeah, that's good to draw it there. Hey, will you guys come over here real quick? jig from the vibration of the machine. Um, I was watching Brigham do it, and so what I ended up doing is I just took a straight edge and drew a line right across all of them to get to get the right bore distance. And what I'm noticing as I'm boring is jigs seem to be wandering. Hmm. It's not the table. Interesting. Maybe. The table's not tight, tight enough. It's tight. Mm -hmm. And so and so every every couple um, things that I'm boring, it goes different distances. Like right now, it's good. Yeah. So so I'm noticing it's it's very slight, mm -hmm. um, but but it's enough that I'm noticing that it's you know. Yeah. Like look at uh, number fifty. Mm -hmm. <laughs> number fifty. Uh, the the hole oh, doesn't yeah. totally bisect the. Yeah. It, it is slipping. Look. Oh. Same, yeah. with, same yeah. with this one. Bit. So we ought to get some C clamps and just crunch down on a little bit better. Maybe because those don't really put that much pressure on. Yeah. They're they're good for flexibility and paper? stuff. Not. Oh, so okay. it's good now. I think it'd be a good idea to, in the future, always draw a line. Is your arm getting tired yet, Matt? <laughs> Not even a little bit. See what you're doing because this low battery sign is right in the middle. Yeah, you just have to click on close. Close and it'll get rid of it, huh? Yep. Because if you do low battery mode, I think it quits the video. Oh, really? Yeah. Probably, yeah. So basically, what I'm doing is I'm arcing that tail, huh? Uh, yep, I'm arcing the tail of the Grand Hammers. It should look like that. Yeah, that's good. So, this is what they start out as. Look like squares. big squares at the end. When you arc them. Nice. 
cuts them down to a really clean, thin end. Yeah. Sweet. All done? All done. Way to go. It's ready to be bored. Boring. Hey Jake. Hmm? So did you see that the way the way it works? The way it goes from here to there and then to there to there. And this one's cut up. And that so there. do you wanna hold the camera or you just wanna make sure it's flat. pull these out? Well, the next step is to bore those. That's fun. Cool. It's a nice jig. Okay, let's, let's see. Uh, yeah. Um, Okay, so what we've done is we have filed, which gets rid of the, the U cup shape. It's weird. Then we have bored, so it's this is an angle. Scott, Scott Lee, this is about a I don't know, fifteen degree angle, something like that. Um, it was like eight or nine. Eight or nine. Degree. Yeah. Okay. So you can see that it goes in the center there and comes out off to the side here so it's um, yeah, about not perfectly perpendicular like that, which yeah. is intentional yeah. then is the coving the back of the tail okay. then the arcing right there at the other end of the back of the tail and then the tapering which gets it shaped kind of well, and the needle voicing tapered shape oh yeah forgot the needle voicing at the beginning as well after the after the filing so um, so next we'll we'll put we'll put the lines in it um, just very faint lines to give it a little bit more um, grip on the back tick. And, uh, that looks like kind of a pattern on there now. What is that from the sander? Yes, huh? I, yeah, it is from the sander. Uh, well, I don't know if it's from the sander or the grain of the wood. Do you hmm. think it's the grain of the wood? Uh, both. Is that what you're saying, Rusty? No, the grain goes this way. That's definitely from the sander. Hmm. Oh. This checkering thing you were mentioning earlier. We'll just do that by hand. Okay. We'll just use a file. And just kind of put lines in it. Um, now there's a machine, right? That you could go around the whole thing. I just saw it over there. You're talking about the knurler? Yeah, the knurler. So that's for, that's for shanks. shanks. That's different. Yeah. yeah that that kind of reduces the size that. of the end of the shanks, uh -huh. so you can move them around in the, uh, in the hammer butts or the hammer heads. Uh -huh. So you can. And get you do that angles. for each one. Yeah, you have to do that for each one. Uh -huh. Cool. Do you want to use yeah. that? All right. <laughs> <laughs> Do not get anywhere near that at the beginning or the end. Something that I noticed that David was doing at the end, which it's okay because he's a grown-up, <laughs> but I don't want you even getting close to what he was doing. When the blade was still spinning, I noticed David put this down so that he could oh. reset the jig. David Good man. can do that. Not you. <laughs> this blade. 
Not on this machine. And then when you're all done, count your fingers. <laughs> Before and after. You know Check what happens blood to the rest of your life? You that's kind of confusing because of all the red paint. <laughs> no more violin <laughs> lessons. <laughs> yeah, no more piano, no more violin. Just game over. No more video games? That's right. Okay. <laughs> Dang. That's, that's, that's the motivation right there to do it all. Okay. Yeah, toes, right? <laughs> I want you to be interested in actually. Your, your hand. This is so weird. <laughs> you you to play a game with your toes? That would be so weird. This. And this needs to be firmly <laughs> on, the edge. on the edge. Go slowly. Do not rush it through. Just go slowly yeah. through and then pull it back. And then when you have it over here, turn it off. Wait till the blade stops until you approach the machine again. You got it? Yeah, you just take about out of battery here. Okay. Right. Now, you need a charger? You... Probably. I've got, I've got like a charger. Well, I've got to go. We're just oh. Okay. It's that's time. So, that's the end of Facebook Live. Yay. Oh, thank you. We're all going to get to all of them, but Jake's going to finish up for Come us. Come again next week. Morning. Yeah, again <laughs> next week. Maybe we'll have a look at the, we'll see how far we go can Go Jake, get. yeah. See if we can uh, maybe make some progress on these hammers, actually getting them installed. Getting them kind of cleaned up. Maybe that would be the best to sew blast because going through all these machines, all these steps, they're getting really dirty. <laughs> the white felt, it doesn't make any difference whatsoever yeah. to the functionality panel, but to the professionalism and just kind of taking pride in our work, we want it to look nice and clean. So what do you so, mean? Just kind of soda blast them after after they're installed? Or you could you could look at them as you're done and the ones that are bad, we've got this little box and you can just... In the box? Yeah. I'm a little concerned about that's, that. That's a little pretty aggressive. It's glass. Yeah. It's crushed glass. Oh. <coughs> I'm liking the soda. Soda cleans up felt so these. fast. It Fine really does a great job. What's that? Soda cleans felt so fast. I think we're going to do white that. Too. Whereas, whereas the crushed glass just kind of obliterates things. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm thinking, <laughs> I'm thinking we're going yeah. to replace the glass with soda. My concern about soda is one that it cakes in there um. and also two it, it it fogs up. It just kind of makes a cloudy mess in that cabinet. So I think we're just gonna have to deal with that. Have you tried it with the shop back hooked up to the little board on the side? No. But I'd like to um, let's do that's that. That's a good idea. Do you think you think we should just leave the box for, for mainly yeah, brass board. and hard wood? Side, there's a only like floor. like or like metal and wood yeah, instead of like your soda work on those. Yeah. It does, but I mean, I think I think it'd be nicer to because since it's more abrasive, um, the soda doesn't really do such a great job on like on like metal and and wood or hardwood or anything because. I mean, usually when I'm soda blasting, I'm trying to get something off, off the action that's on like the metal braces or something. Let's let's talk about this actually after we. <laughs> yeah. So um, okay. So next week, come check us out. Uh, Wednesday morning, 6 o'clock. We usually start about 6.20, 6.30, something like that. But uh, Facebook Live for Piano Talk. Thanks for watching. Yay, Wednesday mornings. So do you just push the button? Of course you don't do the code. Right.